Picture yourself sitting at church, totally locked in, keyed in with the pastor. You are like your life is being changed by what he's preaching. And then right in the middle of it, he uses this key phrase that's like a key to what he's teaching and you have no idea what it means. And he doesn't bother to describe or define what this phrase means. Okay. In those moments, it's like, no, just tell me what you're talking about. (laughs) There are topics that are commonly referenced in Christian circles that are not always actually defined or taught to us because they're such hallmark principles. And so the month of May, I'm spending on those topics that are often referenced and not often taught, such as fasting, discipleship. Today, we're covering discernment. Next week, we'll be covering maybe speaking in tongues or tithing. Come vote on my Insta stories on Instagram at Java with Jen to let me know which one you want to hear. And then stay tuned for Life Hacks, where I share five websites slash apps to save you money and find you some cool little things and find some cool deals. Okay, let's jump into this episode. Hey, it's Jen. Have you ever listened to one of the episodes and thought to yourself, oh, I wish I could leave a response to that, or I wish I could leave feedback or ask a question. Did you know there's actually a way to do that in Spotify now? I know it's super cool. So if you head over to Spotify and search for Java with Jen podcast or Java with Jen hearing God's voice for everyday life, you may have to search all of it. And then you go and check out my most recent episodes. There are polls and Q&A options that you can weigh in on and I can connect with you that way over here on this platform. I usually use Instagram to connect with you guys, but now with this feature from Spotify, it's a super cool way to engage with the content of each episode and talk to me directly. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So go head over to my latest episodes on Spotify and let's do that right now. Hi, and you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. One of my wonderful listeners suggested today's topic, which is discernment. If any of you guys have been in church for very long, you have experienced that frustration of hearing things referenced or, or instructions given or principles taught in church, but there's key pieces that are missing because you don't know what those words mean, okay? And so like, you know, we talked about discipleship and fasting. Well, discernment is one of those that we hear referenced and used contextually, so we kind of like assume that people kind of start to figure out what it means. But I'm going to take the time to kind of pull it apart and jump into it. Now, the good news is it's a pretty simple topic. It's not complicated, so this will be a shorter episode. Um, And I honestly was really encouraged as I was digging into this. I will always, guys, listen, even if I know a lot on a topic, I will always spend time studying it out in the Word because I want to make sure that I am bringing really fresh, really accurate stuff to you guys. So Anything in here that is my theory, I will let you know it's my theory. (laughs) Okay, so let me share a story that happened a couple of years ago. I had just moved to this area. It was like maybe 16, I said a couple, 16 years ago. I had just moved here and I didn't really know where anything was except my house and Walmart. That's basically what I knew at that point and the highway (laughs) because that went between me and the house and Walmart. And so I pulled off the highway, went to this gas station, pulled in at the pump and was pumping my gas. Well, you know, standing there pumping gas, you're looking around. It's a good thing I was not on my cell phone because I would not have recognized this man. I look towards the convenience store at the gas station and there's a man sitting outside the convenience store in his car in the driver's seat with the door open and his foot out one foot out on the ground the other in the car like he's just chilling and I was like that's kind of odd you know like who just chills out at the gas station and um and I look and I notice that in his side mirror the angle his door is open his side mirror is is looking right at me and I notice out of the corner of my eye I'm kind of being discreet I look over there and I can tell he's watching me And I was like, oh, crap. And so I was like, that's, you know, my radars are up. Us girls, we actually all of us, we all have those radars. And so I'm I'm watching him. And when I put the pump away, close everything up, get in the car and I reverse and I pull out of the driveway. I notice he pulls his foot into the car 
closes the door and starts his engine up. And I was like, hmm. Well, at this point, I realize he might be following me. And inside of my spirit, inside my gut, I had all kinds of alarms going off, like that big uh uh-oh feeling on the inside, like, oh, something's not right. (laughs) That was going off like crazy. And so I, I pull up to the stop sign and I see he's pulled out of the gas station. He's a couple cars behind me, but he's in the same lane as me, going the same direction as me. And so as I'm driving, my street is only a couple of streets down on the feeder road. And so I'm driving down the feeder road and I hear it like literally on the inside of me, it was like the Holy Spirit was yelling, don't go home, don't go home. But y'all, I didn't know where the police station was. I didn't know where anything was. And that was 16 years ago. I didn't think about picking up my phone and like, calling somebody. I I just was like stunned. I just didn't know what to do. So I, I, you know, my brain is immediately calculating like, okay, if I go really fast here, he gets stuck. He's got to wait for those other cars to get through the stoplight or the stop sign and I can get ahead and get some traction, you know, so I'm like trying to think how I can like evade this guy. So I pull down the, um, the attached street that's going to take me towards my home, but I immediately darted up the first street. Cause I was like, if I can get off this street, he saw me turn onto it. So if I could get off of it, I'd get out of the way. And so I just pulled into the longest, deepest driveway I could find that like went up behind someone's house and blocked me with bushes. And so I pulled up as far as I could. So he hopefully couldn't see me, but I could, I could see him when he drove past. He was looking around. He was looking for me. And I was so shaken. I was so startled. But I was so thankful for that discernment inside of myself that recognized that that was dangerous but because nothing had happened yet technically, right? No, no laws were broken. No one was harmed. But that discernment inside of myself set off the alarms and I recognized I need to handle this differently. And so... I finally went to my house, opened the garage, pulled into the garage and closed the garage and then proceeded to call my fiance, now husband, and freak out about what just happened. I've never had something like that happen before that I've been aware of, but it was very striking to me the importance of paying attention to my discernment and and how the Holy Spirit was helping me. Okay, or here's another example of simple discernment that maybe a lot of you encounter. You're at the grocery store and your sweet little three-year-old is hungry, is tired, but you guys have had a busy morning. So you don't maybe recognize that they're hungry and tired, but they are throwing a royal fit because you would not get them the candy they just saw, right? So at first, as a parent, you're like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my ill-behaved, crazy, demonic child? (laughs) You're going crazy. But then the discernment of a mama kicks in, your perception kicks in and you recognize, oh wait, you're hungry and you're tired. There's a problem. Let me go get you some popcorn chicken from the deli right now. (laughs) Right? Dude, life hack right there. When I took my little ones to Walmart to go grocery shopping, I would intentionally take them hungry and I would get popcorn chicken and they would sit in the cart and they would eat popcorn chicken the whole time we were at the store and we'd get out of there peacefully. It was amazing. Anyways, So that's a type of discernment. You're being perceptive and you're recognizing, hey, there's something below the situation, below the scenario that is what actually needs attention, right? So here's another scenario. I was in college in Bible school and I remember being in the hallway, being approached by a girl. I didn't know her very well, but I, I, we had somewhat of a relationship because we lived in the same hallway and she approached me and she just, she was trying to get me to do something for her or she was asking me, she just, I just remember she came up to me and she was crying, trying to make her case. And I just remember feeling so manipulated. I felt sick. I literally could see the ingenuineness of her tears that she was legitimately trying to manipulate me. And I don't know why, but it was so blatant even though to the other eye, other girls walking past seemed kind of like, oh no, what's wrong? But I recognized it so blatantly that I looked her in the face. I was so bold, y'all. I don't think I would do this now. But I looked her in the face and I said, excuse me. I said, don't you dare try to manipulate me with your tears. If you need to ask me a question, you're welcome to ask me a question and we can talk about whatever your issue is. But don't you dare try to manipulate me with your emotions. You're better than that and I'm better than that. And I said, when you're ready to talk, 
let me know and we'll talk. And I walked away and I'm like, Tinnily, I don't know if that was kind or not, but I tell you, I, I kid you not. She came back to me, I think either later that evening or the next day. And she thanked me for that. And she said, Jenna Lee, it shocked me when you said that, but I realized that's exactly what I was doing. I've grown so accustomed to manipulating people to get what I want that I thought I had to manipulate to be heard, but you helped me realize I don't have to manipulate. I can just ask. And it was kind of a game changer for her. I was like, how was I so bold? I think back on that and I kind of cringe a little bit. But, um, but those are all situations and instances where discernment was demonstrated. Something that's invisible and intangible is able to be recognized by your discernment. That's what discernment is. Okay. And so the definition of discernment is having insight or intuition into a situation. It's the imperceptible ability to recognize right from wrong or the difference between two things, okay? So discernment is, it's intangible. Um, It's basically, remember this phrase, discernment is you can see what is unseen and you can recognize what is intangible. You can see what is unseen. You can recognize what is intangible, Now, there are lots of situations in life where discernment could be required Um, just from a relational standpoint, from spiritual standpoints, from decisions, uh, maybe financial decisions or whatever. We have to actually use discernment on a regular basis. Discernment is part of our decision-making process because the truth is we are not just a... We're not just a functional being. We are, we are highly perceptive. For example, in communication, for, for example, the words that are spoken is actually only 20% of the actual communication that is happening. The other 80% comes from body language, tone of voice, facial expressions, inflection in your voice, um, the, the gait with, with which you speak, whether you're speaking quickly or slowly, all of those things send a message. And so the ability for us to read between the lines, if you will, is in some, in some um, it's, it's a type of perception. It's a type of having insight. And so it just shows that we are not just a functional being. We are not just facts and logic and function. We are emotion, we are intuitive, we are insightful, perceptive, and seeing what is unseen and recognizing what is intangible is part of how we operate as humans, and that's where discernment fits in. Now, I just want to point out, my husband and I were talking about this topic briefly, and he mentioned how discernment, and I thought it was such a great point, discernment is different than discerning of spirits. They're related, but they're not the exact same thing. Discernment in general is kind of the broad, the broad view of this, whereas discerning of spirits is a very honed in specific view where I can discern what spirits might be operating. For example, that story with the girl, I was able to discern that she was operating in manipulation. That's actually a spirit. It's a spirit of witchcraft, um, a spirit of control. And so I was able to say, excuse me, you are not going to try to manipulate me. I was able to speak right to the heart of things, right? So that I might have actually been discerning, demonstrating a discerning of spirits. But discernment in general is your ability to see what is unseen, recognize what is intangible. It's your ability to weigh and calculate and perceive the difference between maybe what is visible to your senses and what is imperceptible and not visible to your senses. Okay. So my friend Jessica shared this little bit of information with me, which I thought is kind of amazing. I really feel like discernment, um, plays and operates in the same field as our subconscious. So your subconscious is everything that's happening kind of like, like when you have an app open on your phone and you're using it, It's open and it's being used. That's like your conscious mind where you might have 12 or 15 apps that are running in the background, like your gas mileage tracker, your 
you know, I don't even know, your walk tracker, all these different things that are running in the background, but you're not looking at them, you're not um, using them, you're not taking information from them necessarily, but they're still running in the background. That's like your subconscious operating in the background. So your subconscious pulls in 10 million bits of data every second. Like, think about that for a second. When you are in a situation, you're pulling in up to 10 million bits of data from smells to sounds to the way the wind and air waves are moving around you to the carpet under your floor. I'm sitting upstairs to the way the couch is like you can pull in all this atmospheric information every second, but your brain only utilizes 2% of that your conscious mind only utilizes 2% of that. So what about the other 98%? Well, the other 98% is sitting in your subconscious able to be utilized even if you did not cognitively or mentally process it, okay? That's why like dreaming is really important. That's why like in fact, I found out I went to my natural path. I thought this was so crazy. It sounded kind of voodoo-y and new agey until I really started to learn the science behind it. But okay, I'm going to get nerdy on you for a second, but I think it's just so fascinating. Okay, so all the cells in your body are communicating, right? They all have energy. They're all sending electronic messaging throughout your whole entire system. Your brain sends electronic pulses through your body and it tells the nerves and the muscles what to do and everything works together. It's like this constant humming computer that is always working, right? And so this woman was telling me at my naturopath, she was saying there's this new science discovery where all of your cells, your body, your subconscious and all of this can actually communicate with you even if your brain doesn't recognize um, how to process the information, can't call it all up to the surface, your body can still communicate. So kind of like if you've ever been sick and you're just like, Maybe you're fighting off a cold and suddenly you're just craving oranges all the time. You're like, I don't know why I want oranges, but I just want to eat all kinds of oranges. Well, it's because your cells in your body know what's happening in your body. And it's like, hey, we're fighting something. We need vitamin C. We need to crave oranges. How do we get vitamin C? It's in oranges. Let's crave oranges. And so it's like your body is is doing all of these processes that your brain doesn't even recognize. I mean, your brain does, your mind doesn't, your understanding doesn't. So that's where discernment, I believe, operates. And your spirit man, which is the part of you that gets saved, when you get saved, become saved and made like Jesus, your spirit man operates in in all of that because, I mean, your spirit man is always awake, always hearing from the Lord, always in communication with the Father, but our brains just don't always benefit from it. Our brains don't always recognize what's happening. And so our ability to step into discernment, I think, is a lot about our ability to tune in to what God is saying to tune into those unspoken things and those invisible things. Okay. So it's your discernment is the power to see what is not evident. Oh, sorry. This is actually a definition I found online. Discernment is the power to see what is not evident to the average mind. So as I started researching in the word, I was like, okay, I understand some of the science behind it now. That's pretty great. But what does the word of God say about discernment? Because God's insight is always just fascinating. Um, so as I started looking up discernment, you know, there was actually, it didn't even pull up the scripture about discerning of spirits, but it did pull up a whole lot of Proverbs and a whole lot of scriptures that talk about learning and knowledge. And I thought it was interesting. Basically what I drew from scripture, and I would encourage you go look up discernment in your Bible and see how it's used. But when I looked it up in a dictionary, it was hard to define. Um, There was like one or two words and like maybe one or two synonyms. I was like, what? And it was perception, intuition, insight. And so listen to what the word of God says. Psalms 119.25 says, I am your servant, Lord. Give me discernment that I might understand your statutes. Give me discernment. So one thing I did recognize as I was reading the word, 
Discernment is something that is given by God. If you've ever encountered someone who seemed very discerning, like they just always had a wisdom about them where they knew the right decisions to make, discernment seems to always, at least in my experience, be attached to an awareness of righteous living, an awareness of right decisions. And so then that makes me realize that discernment is more than just subconscious happenings. Discernment is more than just, is my body in tune with my brain and my mind? And my, it's more than that. Discernment is our supernatural ability from God and from learning, from learning from his word, to be able to recognize the difference between what is right and what is wrong. What is a righteous choice and what is not a righteous choice. Now here's where this does then again tie back to science. God spoke nature into existence. God is the originator from which everything comes, right? And so when we get, I feel like this whole Christian life is about us being restored back to the original design that God had for us. Before sin came in, it was about us being in whole union with him, wholly uninterrupted with sin, wholly complete in him, wholly knowing who we are, wholly walking in righteousness, right? And so discernment is about getting us back to that place of recognizing what is God in this? What is God's decision in this? What is God's thoughts in this? What is God's position in this? What is God's feelings in this? And us continually exercising and and calculating. It's like that subconscious that weighs all that information. Discernment is like our spirit man weighing these different things and, and discerning where is God in this situation. That's what discernment is, where we can sense in a situation, where is God in this situation? Is he saying for me to be still? There was a situation where um, I had been, rumors were spread about me and I'd been accused of some things. And I had to then discern what is the right response? Because my flesh and my mind were coming up with all these great reasons why I should just go tell her off and why I should, you know, do this and do that and address the situation. And, you know, in some situations or some in another time and whatever, it might have been appropriate to go confront it. But we discerned that what God was telling us was to be still, that the Lord would fight for us. And so in that moment, I had to discern, God, what is your will in this situation? And so... Proverbs 1.4 talks about, actually, um, Hosea, actually, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Hosea 14.9, I only have four verses I wanted to pull out, but they all kind of pointed to different aspects of discernment. Hosea 14.9 says, who is wise? He will realize these things. Who is discerning? He will understand them. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. Who is discerning? He will understand them. I found that a lot of times where discernment came up in scripture, it paired it with either knowledge or understanding. And really understanding is the ability to take information that's been processed and know what to do with it, right? That's understanding. It's like, great, I have all these tools understanding is when I know how to use what tool, when, and why in order to create the thing, right? That's understanding. So discernment is when I can step into a situation, look at all the tools, and be able to assess and figure out, this is probably what I need to do. That would be discernment. And discernment comes in, say, a situation where you're building a shelf. Discernment comes because I have knowledge from building shelves before. Now, if it's the first time I've ever built a shelf, I'm probably not going to naturally have discernment how to build it unless I've used all those tools and use things similar. I will have some natural discernment. So one thing I recognized in these scriptures is that discernment is learned as you're exposed to knowledge. That's why a lot of times older people can demonstrate great discernment 
because why? They have more knowledge. They have more experience. They have more wisdom from life. They've been through more. They recognize the tools that are laid all over the floor because they've been around the block a few times, right? And so because they've experienced, you know, nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. Once you've been around for a few years, you start to encounter the same type situations. People gossip about you. Oh yeah, this has happened before. This is how I need to handle it. You know, people are, uh, you know, my boss is accusing me. Okay, that this is how I need to handle it. So as you grow in knowledge about life, you also grow in discernment of how to handle it because hopefully you're growing in wisdom as you get older, right? Discernment is the ability for us to lock in on, okay, what is, what is God's will in this? We're seeing the unseen. My neighbor can't come up and necessarily always tell me what the right decision is, right? Sometimes, yes, and that good counsel is, is we want to pursue wise counsel, But sometimes nobody else can tell you the answer. Sometimes nobody else can come in and say, yeah, this is what you need to do. Especially when it's kind of a a situation where it's like it could go either way. You really need discernment, which is the ability to hear and understand what God's plan for you is. Um, Let's see. Proverbs 1.4 says it's talking about the benefits of Proverbs, which brings wisdom. Um, Proverbs is for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Says, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. Interesting that it pairs discerning right there with listening and adding to your learning. I was super excited as I began to study this. I was like, oh, if discernment is given by God, what about those people who aren't born with discernment? You know, Um, and I saw this over in Hebrews uh chapter shoot let me find that verse i wrote it down hebrews 5:14 it says it's talking about the word of god and how if you still need someone to teach you the elementary truths of god's word you just are needing milk you're not ready for solid food and then it says anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings of righteousness. Remember, teaching, righteousness, discerning. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use of the word of God, have trained themselves to discern good from evil, or distinguish good from evil. By constant use have trained themselves to discern good from evil. So not only can God give discernment, which is a supernatural grace he can give us, right? Um, Like in Psalms 119, where it said, I am your servant, give me discernment, give me understanding, give me discernment that I may understand your statutes so I can benefit from them and know how to apply them, right? But here we also see in Hebrews that discernment can be learned and gained and grown in by constantly using the word of God, meaning when I see a principle in the word, I apply it to my life. I see a principle about tithing, I tithe on my next paycheck. I see a principle about walking in love, then I walk in love when someone's ugly to me. I see a principle here, I put it into practice here. That constant use of the word of God, according to this, trains me to distinguish righteousness from evil. Because as I walk out righteousness... It then puts me into that place where on a cellular cellular level, right? God made the earth. He made me as a person. His laws and principles are woven into nature. When I am walking righteously, everything in life feels right because it is right. It is righteous. It is in the path. It's in, okay, it's like like music. If you have an orchestra and all the instruments are playing in harmony, or even if they're all playing the same note and you're in a room, you can hear it when those notes reverberate within each other and they're one, they're completely synchronized. There is such a harmony or a, a unison that you can feel deep down to your toes, right? When nature, when you walk in righteousness, it's so hard to describe this, guys. Forgive me. I'm trying. When you walk in righteousness, you feel good about yourself. 
You feel peace in your soul. You feel truth in your spirit. Even your cells are at peace because your cells were spoken into existence by a righteous God. So even your cells know when you're right and when you're not right. (laughs) And so it's crazy. And so it's like, that's why like when we have unforgiveness in our, in our hearts, they say, doctors say that 80 to 90% of sickness comes out of emotional uh, wounds like unforgiveness. That's actually the number one thing that causes sickness is unforgiveness. Why would unforgiveness cause us to be sick? It's because unforgiveness is not a righteous positioning. You're not walking in unison, in agreement with the Spirit of God. And so your cells in your body become confused. They're like, I don't even know which way is right. I don't know how to vibrate correctly and straight. I'm, I'm getting all confused and like all over the place. Have you ever been in a season where you were wrestling with sin and you felt like you just walked around in confusion or you just almost felt like you didn't know which way was up? It's because discernment, the ability to recognize what is righteous and what is not righteous comes through practice, through hearing the word of God, through the knowledge of the word of God and the things that God would say and do, through practicing it, and then by God releasing a grace to us to walk in discernment. I hope that was not confusing. I'm really trying to articulate what I'm seeing in my head. (laughs) And it's just everything in life can become harmonized and synchronized when it's in alignment and in submission to the God of the universe and his way of doing things. The laws of the universe were designed by God and they will always cooperate with God and his principles. Your body is true. Your peace of mind is is true with that. Um, And so discernment, back to our original, discernment is your ability to recognize the difference between two things, or more specifically, between righteousness and unrighteousness, the ability to see what is not seen, perceive, uh, to recognize what is imperceptible. The outside eye may not see it, but the inner you can recognize it. So with my kids, one way I nurture this with my kids is I will, you know, we as parents, I think we're always concerned about the safety of our kids, especially around adults we don't know or in situations where we don't know who's going to be there, whatever. Um, I don't want some pervert getting a hold of my kid, right? None of us do um, or anybody with any kind of creepy intentions. And so I began to teach my kids how to sharpen their discernment. Well, how did I do that? I began to give them knowledge Like, hey, this is what's right and this is what's not right. Um, An adult person should never, ever, ever touch you where your clothes cover, ever. Unless it's a doctor that mommy and daddy are in the room with you and the doctor is trying to give you a health exam, you know. Um, Otherwise, you're the only one that can touch your body when you're in the shower cleaning yourself off. (laughs) You know what I mean? So we gave him knowledge. We help them. We give scenarios. This is what a bad situation would look or feel like. This is what a good situation would look or feel like. Or if you're ever faced with this kind of a situation, here's how you should respond. And so we kind of give them some scenarios, not to freak them out, but just enough that if they were ever in that situation, they would know what to do. Because I realized that just because our kids end up in those situations doesn't mean they're going to know what to do. Discernment and to discern how to handle it does come through knowledge. We have to help them understand. And that's where outside of that example, you exercising and developing discernment in your life, you need to be reading your Bible. You need to be giving yourself the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. Listen to Proverbs. It is the best place to start. I love Proverbs, but anything in your Bible is going to help you begin to understand what looks like righteousness and what looks like unrighteousness. God is very clear. He tells us clearly, this is what a righteous life looks like. This is what an unrighteous life looks like. This is the benefits of righteousness. These are the consequences of unrighteousness. God gives us knowledge, just like I was giving my kids knowledge. And then I also tell them, 
to lean into their discernment, not just their head and their analysis, but then sometimes, you know, your brain won't be able to make sense of the situation, but your gut is freaking out. And so I tell them, listen, even if it doesn't make sense, if you ever have your uh uh-oh feeling in your stomach going off, telling you something doesn't feel right, something doesn't feel right, I said, always trust your uh uh-oh feeling. Always trust it and get out of the situation. And so that's how I, that's the, that's kind of like, it's like there's those two parts. It's the knowledge that trains your ability to recognize right from wrong. But then it's also an intuition that the Holy Spirit can give us. Like the Bible said, I am your servant, give me discernment. And so as an application for this episode, if you want to grow in discernment, you can grow in discernment. You need to ask the Lord to give you discernment for situations or just in life in general. I have spent many, many prayers asking the Lord, God, give me discernment. Help me to recognize truth from not truth. There's stuff going on in our nation right now that when I see it splash across the TV, there have been certain specific instances where I'm like, that's not right. I can tell that's not right. They're saying one thing, but I just feel like it's a facade. And then later, I'll find out I was right. I could discern that that was not right. And so ask the Lord for discernment, but then you also need to be putting inside of yourself the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong, which is the word of God. Be putting in that knowledge. It'll train your thinking and then your intuition is what will pick up on the things that you can't recognize with your brain or with your understanding. So does that help? I hope that helps. Discernment. It was actually surprisingly difficult to... uh, research and 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 figure out how to articulate but i hope this was helpful listen guys topics that are mentioned in church and not always explained can be frustrating but those are the things i love to tackle because i feel like there's no point in going to church well not no point in going to church but there's no point in talking and acting like a christian if you don't even understand it well enough to be able to demonstrate it right like we need our minds need to be fruitful we need to understand these things so we can actually apply them and reap the benefits of these wonderful things that god has made available to us so with that said go to my instagram if you're not following me java with jen is my handle Go over there. Let's stay in touch because I'm going to take a two-month summer break. I don't want to lose you guys. I don't want to like lose touch with y'all. I might be, I I say might, I plan on doing some mini episodes. They're going to be kind of spontaneous, probably unplanned. Like I'm not going to like schedule them or anything because I want the freedom to take a break, you know. But um, I still want to stay in touch. And so I want to play around with that format of doing something real short and concise. And I want to get your feedback on that. Stay in touch on Instagram because I will let you guys know when there's new stuff that drops. And I'll also will ask you guys for your feedback. I lean into your feedback more than you guys even know. So for next week's topic, it's either speaking in tongues or tithing. And I would love to know which one you guys want to hear about. Okay. Really, I like both topics. I was just thinking, oh, I love tithing. But really, I like both topics. (laughs) So stay tuned for life hacks so you can learn some great little websites that'll save you some money and you might find some new treasures without having to drop a whole lot of money on it. So love you guys. Come follow on Instagram. See you next week. Okay, so for today's life hack, I want to tell you some of my favorite sites to score really great deals. Okay, so the first one, those of you who love to shop Goodwill, did you know you can shop Goodwill online? It's called shopgoodwill.com, and you can go on there, and it's actually a really great location to find electronics at Goodwill and search from various locations. I don't know how the backside of it works. I don't know what determines what ends up in your store and what ends up online, but it is pretty great. And I I, I want to say I bought one of my sons a little gaming device off of there for a fraction of the cost. So that one is awesome. Another site that I love, so anytime I find something that's really expensive that I want to try, but I don't want to spend full dollar ticket, right? I will go, I downloaded this app called Mercari. It's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari. 
And it's kind of like eBay, except you don't have to bid on anything. You can just put in your request. You can make a lower offer, um, but you put in your request. And I say it's like eBay because you can list your own stuff on there. I've sold stuff on Mercari. And it's pretty great, and it's actually becoming very popular. So Mercari is an app you can download to find better deals. Again, it's a really great way to vet out those more expensive brands like facial products or whatever that you want to buy that you don't want to drop a pretty penny on. Also, another website that I love for clothes is Shein.com. It's also an app, and if you use, um, like if you're into using those um like Ebates, it used to be called Ebates, now it's called like Rakutakin or Rakutakin or <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. Basically where you shop, it tracks your spending and you'll get a certain percentage back and every quarter they'll cut you a check. I use that platform, it used to be called Ebates. If you search Ebates, like Rebates but without, without the R, um, it should still pull up in the app store but it's Ebates.com or Ebates app store. Um, I use it at Christmas time. I used it when we had to refurnish our house after Hurricane Harvey. I use it uh, at when it's time to go school shopping, school clothes shopping and whatever. Anytime I know I'm going to be doing a lot of online shopping, I make sure to use it. But it is useful for any kind of online shopping. I just tend to forget to use it unless I'm doing a lot of buying. But all that to say, in fact, if you guys want to use that, I think on my Instagram... Let me look real quick. I'm going to peek real quick. I think on my Instagram, I have my Ebates. Um, I don't, but I'll throw it on there. Okay, so on Instagram, I'll throw in there. I have an Ebates referral link so that you'll automatically get some cash back. And then I get some cash back too if you sign up through my link. I think it's like $30 or something pretty significant. Don't quote me on that. Go look, go through the link. It's in my Instagram bio. It pulls up my link tree with all kinds of different links you can click. And I'll put on there um, Ebates and then I'll put the official name for it. But it's really great when you're doing online shopping. Anyways, all of that ties to Shein.com because Shein gives you like 6% back. It's actually a really great uh, return rate. And so they do really, really well. Shein is another website that I like for buying clothes. I will say sizing and quality are a little hit or miss. So you have to be willing to keep your expectations low. And if it's a wonderful item you love, consider it a win. If it's an item you hate, well, that's okay. They are really great about returning stuff. I have gotten some of my favorite wardrobe staples. I think I got some really long sleeve, long duster um, leopard print kimono that goes all the way to the floor. I've gotten um, a leather pencil skirt that fits really great. I've gotten tons of jewelry. If you want jewelry that's just cheap, that you don't have to spend a lot of money on, but you need it just to wear it a few times, especially if you're doing like trendy jewelry that will only last a year because it's only on trend for a year, Shein is a great place to look. Um, so Shein.com. And then the last, which I haven't used in a while, but I do like to peek over there, um, is Wish. Wish is also an app you can buy stuff through. You can get clothes through there. You can get literally tons of stuff. Again, you're going to want to watch the sizing charts and watch the shipping. Um, a lot of stuff from Wish actually comes from Asian countries, and so sometimes the sizing is much smaller and the shipping can take a while. So just weed through that a little bit. Um, it's not hard. They have diff they have the shipping rate. They'll tell you what the estimated delivery date is. But stuff is way cheaper over there. And I have found some really cute stuff. In fact, I have a little, it looks like a, a baby old-fashioned suitcase that the latches, you slide them to the side and they pop open just like an old suitcase. And it's my business card holder. Literally, I bought it for $2 on Wish. And it has held up for years. And it is my favorite. And everybody freaks out when they see it because, hi, I'm a wardrobe stylist. And I have a little suitcase that <laughs> keeps my business cards. It's the cutest thing ever. So anyways, those are the websites I love. Again, that's shopgoodwill.com, um, shein.com ebates.com to get money back when you're going to be shopping online wish.com or the app wish 
I feel like there's another one I told you and I can't forget it already. I can't remember it. Okay, but those are some really great ones. So if you're looking for some fun things to do some shopping, oh, Mercari, that's what it was, the Mercari app. If you're looking for some things to make some cheaper shopping online, try those out. Again, keep in mind, these are sites that are not sen- not selling your Polyvore level bougie quality stuff, okay? It's, it's gonna be, you know, cheaper quality stuff. However, I would not be recommending it if I felt like it was a total waste of money or time. I have found some great things on all of these sites, and that's why I recommend it. So, um, but, you know, it's just more for fun, not for uh, sinking your teeth into for all the time. It's not like Amazon. So, anyhow, those are just fun sites to find some things that are going to help cut some corners and save you some money. So, there's your life hack for today. And, guys, keep in mind... Again, for the month of May, we're wrapping it up. This week was discernment. Next week, it's going to either be about speaking in tongues or tithing. I'm going to put that on my stories on Instagram. I need you guys to vote. I really lean into y'all's feedback like more than you realize. So I need you guys to vote when I throw stuff in my stories. Um, And if you don't see my account come up in Instagram, then why don't you go look for my profile, send me a DM. I've noticed that if I send a direct message to somebody, I will start seeing them at the top of my feed and the top of my stories. So if you want to see my stuff, go to my account, say hello, maybe leave a comment or drop a couple likes, send me a direct message, just basically create some activity that tells the algorithm that you want to see my stuff. So just do that. And I will see you guys on Instagram at Java with Jen. And um, otherwise, we've got one more week until the summer break. And I did mention on Instagram stories, I'm considering doing some mini episodes during the summer. And so let me know if you think mini episodes would be fun. It'd be like, you know, 10 to 15 minute little short nuggets of wisdom that is not a full on episode. It's just shorter and easier to digest. And I just kind of want to play with that model a little bit and see what you guys think. I will primarily be taking a break. So I don't know that I would do those every week. But if I come up with something that's just quick and light and but something I'd like to share, I may just do some surprise mini episodes. So you want to make sure you're still watching throughout the summer because there'll be some surprise content for you guys. So I love y'all. Thanks for listening and I will catch you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. For those of you who've rated or shared this podcast on social media, thank you. Reading your comments and reviews always means so much to me. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say, hey, it's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Thank you to each of you for your ongoing support. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Until next time, remember, you've got this and God's got you.